Hey, what's up? I'm Al Cox. I play games, make games, and everything in between. And today, I'm going to show you some cool assets I've been creating in BuildBox. From like a unique rectangle cube stacker 3D to a BuildBox Pong in 3D with four paddles to basic hitting a ball with a bat and even some simple Space Invaders. Before I show you how to make them, I want to show you also the library of assets that BuildBox has already created for you. So let's take a look. Here is a Pong that I recreated and I'm gonna actually have to delete this one. Oops. As you can see, super simple gameplay mechanics. I just took the flipper template and now I have paddles on the right that move up and down, paddles on the top that move left and right. And this was pretty straightforward to create. Let's check out some other things. I call this one Stack'em 3D. And this is, you just have a rectangle and it goes up and you could see the cubes fall down there. There's even a transparent cube that takes up the whole lengthwise, which is red, that you can see where the cubes stack or don't stack. If you look down below, they even fall. And here is the game over. Let's see what else did I create? Oh, I made this one like a hit ball. This one is pretty fun because it, all it does is it creates these balls and you tap and it'll swing. And so you can just like, oh, hit these balls almost like a baseball like a game and this was a lot of fun to just create after the build box game jam i just wanted to see what i could create and make it some cool stuff and this one actually this guy this is a tap and then the ball just rotates so this one isn't this one doesn't do that much and then the platforms move and then i even tried to do something similar to a space invaders this one was kind of fun to make still haven't set all the objects and enemies yet but again super simple gameplay mechanic. Let's jump into this default world that we have right here. Creating these assets are really cool, but BuildBox has its own internal assets here and all of these do something different. So let's check out the atom point. Okay, let's add this. Here you can see the atom point has a lot going on. It's got this orbit sphere. It's got two of them and they both, you know, these are objects. These are 3D models. And these two 3D models, they look like they rotate. Yeah, here, 45 degree angle rotation, the opposite 45 degree angle rotation. And then here is a rotation animator. So this is actually what's rotating everything. And you can see it rotates causing the object to rotate and when it's finished rotating it goes into this delay node and then we rotates again and then over here we have the object itself rotating so this would be these objects maybe the sphere like which object here is rotating at y200 here we got the add point if collide in this case you can collide with anything usually you would put character defeated makes it go away so you, it can be removed and then like a defeated animation. So these are cool. And then if it collides, uh, the object itself is then removed. So let's take a look at it. Maybe move this back, this over here. So that is the atomic point. Now let's go ahead and move this cube up here. Add some movement, touch to move, Y, 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 cool. And then let's go, oh, go ahead and move Y to all Z and then refresh. Go ahead and add this to the same plane. And nothing. Okay, so let's try it again. Uh, maybe this needs physics. Yep, physics. Set the kinematic. Then we got the atomic point. Check it out. Boom, like that. Let's see it again. Very cool. So that's the atomic point. Got a lot going on here. And there's even more. Let's see what else we got. Asset library, hit the asset. Now let's just go to point. Very simple. Go ahead and put that up there. Now point has if collide, add point, and then remove. Very simple, straightforward. So these are all things that you can do yourself and create in BuildBox without even having to use this. But if you're not sure exactly how to create it, you can just go to the asset library and input it into your object. So even this, just hitting it causes you to get a point. And I can even add something in the world UI. Watch this, so create me UI, do that. Go in here, add some default font. This at 320, and then this function could be used to keep score, points, current. Look at that, zero, and 
one. Now I just have to go in here and change this because I don't like this. And since I'm already here, I might as well change some other stuff. Cool, so let's take another look at the asset library. We have point. If collide, add point. It's almost the same thing as the point. See, you can see the two. The biggest difference here is the model that is used. And this is considered a point. You can do this, add a coin, big. I'm gonna make it bigger, cube. And I wanna fix this invert. One to cube, so now we got one point and two points. Notice that the, the coin is not rotating. Here we have the atomic point that is rotating. So we can literally go in here, take this rotate, and we can put it in the coin where it does something like this. Super easy. And just because I don't like hardness, let's get rid of that and let's add a 0.7 to this because it makes the coin look a little bit more cartoony, which I do like. And 0 0.1, 0 0.2, good. The only thing I think would be better is to go into the UI screen, make this bigger, and then move it all the way up here like that. Also, I don't like the color. I think White. Say this library assets because that's what we are talking about today. So let's check out the other assets, shall we? Poop. Not sure how this one works. Let's bring it into this world. Bigger. And I'm going to go ahead and expand this platform since we keep creating. There, that looks good. Oh, you know what it is? There, I had it in bird. Cool, so let's move this over here past the coin. And what is going on here? We have the 3D model physics set to mesh. Okay. Type static, effective assets. Again, usually you're going to want to change these to specific assets like character because it uses less processing power. You can have it set to everything, but then it's literally looking for everything, something you wanna pay attention to. Okay, so if it collides with anything, then here's set to set color. So this will change the color and this will add a point. Let's see what happens here. Okay, cool. Keep touching that and it only does it one time with changing colors. Now let's see what happens if we change it to kinematic. One, two, point in. Oh, I can still go through it. Strange, but okay. Because my character is set to kinematic, it can pretty much go wherever it wants. If it was set to dynamic, that would not work. Watch. It falls through the ground. We need to add physics to the ground. Static. Whoa, super, super sensitive on the movement. It's like that coin falls through the ground and it doesn't go forward because this object is kinematic and this is dynamic. Cool, let's take a look at the asset library. So now we have an enemy. Let's take a look at this enemy because we're gonna want to avoid this enemy. Here is the enemy with the object right here and we can see the texture, which I think is very interesting because I'm never sure how the textures work. Hardness is 60 and this is the mesh and then it just rotates. Even here, there's no if collide dead. This is just the image of the enemy, so nothing will happen if the character touches this. Here, we can change the color, I believe. Let's take a look. Now, I'm gonna move the cube back to kinematic, go to the 3D world, and then have this back, check out the camera, and have the camera follow the game path. The difference between following the character and the game path is that the game path will just follow along this Z axis, whereas if I follow the character, it'll also move along the Y axis. Here, let me show you. So, do this, which is not what I want. This, I do want. You can see that the enemy does not kill you. Because I don't want this, I change it to game path. Let me look at this again and kind of move it up a little bit. Like that. Again, everyone has their own perspective. Here the end is at the Pacific the 50. There we go. If you wanted that enemy to kill your player, you can just go enemy, collide with character, call this character so that there's no confusion. Put enemy, if collide with character, bring to server. So it's good to add a delay node, make it 0.25 seconds, and then out and game over. So if the character touches this, there's no game over UI screen. So let's add a game over, over here. And we can put an event observer. This puts the event observer in the game UI, which then connects it to here. Let's take a look. 
have a rising touching, maybe the physics is off, let's take a look, we'll move it down more, it collides with character, cinematic, so now I'm going to check the collision editor to see what's going on, okay, here, collided the box, so that should be fine, check the asset character, this is the character, but let me, okay, that looks good, again, I'm just checking the collision shape, here you can see the collision shape around the corner, it's pretty big, and it's even a little bit bigger around the sphere, the torus or the donut, you can see the collision shape barely. This is a really good tool to look at the collision shape. So let's take it off and see what happens. No collision registration. Okay, so usually it's good to put all the if collides and nodes in the character. It's a really good place to make sure things happen the way they are supposed to. So we can put it here, if collide into enemy, and advanced observer, game over, and let's delay it again by 0.25 seconds. If collide in our team for game over. So that looks to the mind map. Doing this makes me feel like you can remove it from here, the enemy. See if it works. We, it doesn't actually click anywhere, but it's because it's a game over. So here, and we can select this. Let's add a navigation button, and this will just restart. Font up here, so you actually know what's going on. And let's go. Easy. All right, let's check out the next item on the asset library. Platforms, super easy. And let's check out the float platform as well. I'm gonna move the enemy over here to the right and move the platform up here. Okay, so here we have a regular platform. Let's take a look at it. And this platform is literally just a cube. It looks like there's nothing here. That's interesting. It has physics and it's static. That is just a regular platform. Not sure why it's there because it doesn't do anything. And let's check out the floating platform. Now the floating platform is kinematic, has physics, goes here, changes the Y, delta means different, so it changes two levels of Y for about two seconds, and it uses the easing function in and out cube. If you're not sure on easing functions, I strongly suggest you Google easing functions. I could literally make a whole video on it. If anything, you should just know these seven easing functions, and they describe how the object moves. Here we can see this is set to negative two, target delta and this is set to positive two all over a two second duration so it's going to move up and down in the y this is how the float platform works this could be used in a number of different ways you can use it as an elevator and here we can even change let's say we want to change these to bigger numbers maybe change it to one see if that makes it any bit faster three negative three see if it moves at an angle it's a lot of cool things you could be doing with the float platform let's keep looking at the asset library let's see what flap does this is based off a of flappy bird we got a lot going on here physics is set to dynamic always interesting when i see physics set to dynamic move this is so this is unique in that it says none moving in a Z direction at negative 10. If collide with enemy, then defeat. Screen button, this is a touch button. So this says if you touch it, then you jump. Okay, so then you jump 20. Let's change this number to 10 and move this direction to negative five and move this flap here and it could be the new character here. Make this a little bit bigger. And here we can see the shape of the collision is bigger than it should be. Sometimes that's on purpose. So let's, uh, hopefully the camera follows the game path. Okay, so the big thing here is the ball is dynamic. Instead of changing the gravity, I can actually change the mass of the object. So I'm gonna change it to a mass of 10 and a bounce of 0.25, just to see if it looks a little bit better. So you can see the ball moving and cool i hit the floating cube put a mass a bounce of one is that oh there i'm gonna add a bounce of three just because i want to see the ball bounce a little bit more than it's bouncing now yeah there we go it's a little bit more i feel like the mass might be too much and we can add zero friction again a lot of different ways you can play with this 
Right now you can just keep tapping forever for the ball. Let's see what else we got in the asset library. Deep Fly, let's check out Deep Fly. And this is set to be for a primary character. No physics, trail, width of 60, if collide for enemy. Here it's moving in an X direction of 15, which means going to the right. We're gonna get rid of that because we're actually going the other direction. Put a negative five. Then this allows X to move on the X and then the Y on the Y. Add a one to that so that we can move in the X and the Y direction. Go to this 3D world. We're gonna move Deep Fly into the character and then put that character here. I'm gonna rotate it like this at a 90 degree angle. So here, and it looks like the X, Y, the Y needs to be inverted. Let's go here, touch Y, invert. Uh, yeah, that works great. And so now we have a character and he's moving all over the place, but the character is static. So let's make him kinematic. That way he's able to move into things. that object okay cool and then that's just has to do with the collision shape that's a nice trail and off we go so we got the 3d model trail touch move x y looks good what else do we got we got lanes the lanes here's a really good example again here's an example of a deep fly and this is moving it within the x direction so let's check out lanes lanes no physics interesting and it looks like these are lane destinations offset two and offset negative two so you're in two different locations it's a touch that goes to a switch mechanism that has a or b so determining which location you're at here's the model rotated at 90 degrees along with a trail so let's go ahead and move lanes into the character area move them up I'm gonna move this over here. I wonder what happens if you have two character assets at the same time. Let's see what happens. Oh, that, oh, he's gone, he's gone. Lanes is gone. Touch, move, defeat, what happened? Speed, okay, here we go, speed. Speed, we're gonna need speed to be down to five. We're just, we're just slow moving over here. Let me get rid of some of this stuff that is confusing. Oh, we need that. I meant here, lanes. And then deep fly, I'm going to remove abilities. Very good. Whenever you tap, you get A or B. A or B. You can see whenever I tap too that the sphere ball uh, bounces. Those are the first 10 assets in the assets library. They're all composed of standard nodes connecting to each other, making each object do something. And you saw even with the platform, that is just an object that doesn't do anything but have physics. All these items can be created individually or one can go to the library to connect all the dots together. So that's kind of the big thing about BuildBox and the nodes code movement these assets are not created by the individual by writing code they have already been created so moving them together and adjusting the variables is pretty simple and easy to do as opposed to creating the objects from scratch with a line of code. As BuildBox develops and grows and the community grows with it, I know I have made my own custom assets that look pretty cool and I'm gonna share with everyone because sharing is caring. Let me know what BuildBox assets and objects that you've created. Leave a link, tell me what's up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to like and subscribe. And I will see you next time. Peace.